Good morning. All right, so keeping up with rays for today, I have shared a few months back, level one, a very comprehensive walkthrough, and I appreciate everybody that did watch it in its completeness because it was long, and I did explain to you that I will continue to share the rest of the levels. It just won't be as comprehensive. So, my guess, probably 20 minutes. Um, because I really do want to give you all a complete um, walkthrough um, as requested. So, yeah, I'm going to get into this. Here is my instructor guide. And, yeah, let me open this up. I'm going to cover. Anyway. This is just the brains of the whole, you know, operation. And I tell you all, you have to have the guide in order to do this. And I recommend that in any program that you use. A lot of times I see people use things, they purchase them and trying to save money, won't purchase the guide. It specifically tells you that you need the guides for these curriculum. This uh, particular curriculum is, I would say, rather pricey. Um, given, you know, most people not want to spend a lot of money. I don't consider it pricey. Education, you can't really put a price tag on it. I just, I don't consider it pricey, but, you know, quote, unquote, pricey. So I'm just going to flip to the scope and sequence because that is very important. And then I will go back to the beginning and kind of show you um, how the lessons work. So if you're not familiar, you know, with the curriculum, I would suggest you go back and look at level one. Now, um, these are leveled, but I would not necessarily, if you know race for today, the original is not necessarily graded. This was rewritten to include the original raised, the little brown books. However, they graded it just for people that have to, um, you know, documentation, state, you know, documentation, they need to have, you know, certain levels. So it is graded, but that's not how we use it. Um, incremental, you know, use it until you, you know, the child has mastered the, um, the mechanics and everything and then go on to the next level. Some of this, if you have more than one level, you may have a child that can do some, some, uh, concepts in one level and also you know in another level and um that's the good thing by by having you know i have multiple children that i'm using it with so we sometimes tend to use multiple levels for different um concepts and that's fine also you know review purposes and things like that but like i said it is a investment it's a hefty investment but it works we have no complaints. Um, a lot of this, I can tell you that I do orally on the um, board. And also, they use a uh, math notebook. That's how they use this so that we can, um, you know, it's a lot. I don't want to necessarily reproduce all of this. But they use their notebooks so that I can see them work out the work and things like that and um sometimes we will do some drills on the board that way you know i can make sure that they have it and explain the concepts and things like that so here's the scope and sequence the main learning objectives learn how to read and write and count numbers to 1000 learn how to multiply and divide numbers fact families for the numbers 1 through 10. Learn place value through hundreds. So again, you may have a child, a, I have a five, seven year old now, you know, um, that's been working through here. Second level. 
So it just depends. Your seven-year-old might not be here yet. Your five-year-old might be here. You know, it just depends on how quickly they can execute those operations and retain those concepts. The thing I like about this is there is a checklist. If they can, they are proficient in everything. And I'm, I can't stress enough about letting your child work out the problems on their own, meaning don't give them the answers, uh, don't guide them. I see that a lot. I, if you notice, I don't guide my kids. I wait for them to give me the answers. I watch them. Even if it's incorrect and they're working out the problem, I don't try to tailor it for video purposes so it looks like they got everything correct. I want to see the uh, weaknesses and show you all uh, what the problem is because that's very important. Um, I don't know. It just seems really superficial and, uh, you know, fake <laughs> to just show them getting the answers and telling them, well, this is seven, right? No, I want you to tell me it's seven, not I'm going to give you the answer because a lot of times, especially in math, there's m multiple ways to solve problems. And so what the way I may solve it may be different they may teach me some things so again let them work out the the problems and, and um understand on their own don't just give them answers i'm gonna hold this on here for a few minutes i'm not going to read off all of this but you can pause it for as long as you like and just look at what the scope and sequence has to offer. Very complete, very thorough. We use these concepts and, and uh, work to build upon things. I point things out throughout the day, throughout the week, whenever we run across them so that they can, you know, refer back. Okay, we did this in this lesson and, you know, this unit and I remember that. So pretty, pretty lengthy. I'm going to give you a glance at the benchmarks. And again, I'm kind of moving backwards. I'll go back to the, um, the introduction and things like that. But because that's, that's the meat of the curriculum, period, any curriculum. You need to read the introduction to tell you how to use it. But these are the benchmarks. And this is what I was saying about, can they, you know, you have to honestly say, can they do this without you helping them? If they can do these things, then you consider them proficient. If they cannot do these things, do not move on. And it is a lot. A lot of times we will just see the problem. Okay, they got the problem correct. They got the problem correct. They got the problem correct. And then we go to the next unit. And then a couple, you know, months or weeks later, we discover they can't remember how to multiply this. You didn't spend enough time. It's not about turning the page every day. If you're on the same page every day, a lot, I have told you guys, you guys that the problems, I'll show you the problems. We don't typically do a whole page in one day that's just not how we do it i break it up because you know the brain is overloaded and i want them to understand these concepts not just show me that they can do it you know they can remember and then next week they don't remember how to do the 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 concept and the operations that's not my goal and not to say that I, i'm ticking every little box in a certain amount of time mm -mm. I don't put a time on it it's whatever they can do so you can see we are on fractions here geometric figures there's some graphing problem solving finding the area of a rectangle the area of uh, squares 
you know things like that and i can tell you that this is level two uh the kids did go into school for a little bit and this stuff was not introduced until grade four so you want to be careful you not you might not get to this in this level you might skip this and say okay they need mostly help on multiplication and division and then you come back to this once you get into another level and they get a better uh, understanding all right so here's a summer skill review This is telling you to practice, things like that. Not every fact has to be automatic, but the majority of them should come fairly easily. They should be practiced daily using real life story problems. Practice these enough and keep them current over the summer. The pace at which learning takes place does not necessarily relate to intelligence or mastery. It has much to do with the learning style and how children think. And so again, um, some of these things we do on the board and I give them a chance to work them out. I will show them and then I will give them a chance to work them out in their notebooks. I have one that is uh, auditory, so that is very important for her. To show her you know and to do the things on the board and orally so that she can give me feedback and I can hone in on the strengths and go from there so the closer learning is to real life the easier it sticks go back to the beginning before I come back to us on this next page or next pages and let me find something so I can quickly turn back here all right I'll tell you a little notes on the pronouns table of contents I'll hold it right here so you can kind of see what's going on does look like a lot it's not overwhelming like I said you work this however you need to you need to stay on a unit like that unit unit three you stay on that for a couple of months this is not a race at all some of these concepts they will get quickly and quicker than others so yeah so in the Penix, in the back part where I just left off, showing you the benchmarks and things like that, it has all the game boards and things that you will need to do that. And I showed you um, in the level one what that looks like. I might go back quickly just to show you. You also get an answer key in the back. All right, I'm not, I did read this in the first one. I'm just going to give you a little glance so you can kind of skim through here. Why this journey? Very important. Here's how one of the nation's most Respected math educators, former classroom teacher Kathy Richardson puts it, when children are taught mathematical concepts or procedures before they reach certain levels of thinking, they do not see the underlying logic of mathematics they are working with. 
All they can do is memorize the processes and procedures. It may appear that they know the mathematics, but in reality, this is just an illusion. What they have learned is not useful to them because they cannot build on it. The illusion of learning breaks down at the point where true understanding is necessary for further growth. If we look at the ability to get the right answers, we miss the information needed to determine what children know and still need to learn. The result is that children spend valuable instructional time trying to memorize what doesn't make sense to them instead of developing the understanding they need. Our goal is not to rush students through the math sequence, but to equip them with the arithmetic skills and thinking skills that will serve them well in real life and in any career. We want students to get it. No matter what their learning style is, pace or natural math ability. I'm trying to read this and hold the camera, but you all get the point. So different learning styles. You can use this with all of your children. It's hands-on, auditory, all of those styles you will get in this curriculum. It tells you your role as the teacher, parent. You serve as a tour guide and your child is a tourist. Learning objectives. It gives you a packing list. Cement mixers. Those are found in the pages. The exercises, those are from the original rays. That's what they call cement mixers, like the little drills and things. So in the morning, you might want to start them on the cement mixers and have them work through those. In the summertime, you know, keep the cement mixers going. I will put the things on the board and have them write them in their notebooks. Four, five, six, ten, you know, whatever I think they need. And you can use them as timed, you know, if you want to do that. And you get your assessment. All of that good stuff. Pre-assessment. Assessment doesn't measure intelligence. It measures readiness. All right, so here is level two, unit one review, lessons one through 15. So it tells you they included a level one benchmark in the appendix for families that did not use uh, this previously. Here's a suggested schedule, three weeks. Now, see, this often concepts being taught, math being taught, and, you know, you learn most curriculum have uh, new concepts every couple of pages or every other page or so, and that's not enough for a child to understand. Three solid weeks. It may take six weeks. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Six weeks is a good base to give you an idea of them actually uh, understanding and retaining and, and getting it. It may take two more weeks of correction because it may take six weeks for them to get there to that moment of, okay, I get it, but then I don't. And, you know, as a parent, you have to be willing to accept that, not just trying to push them on saying, you know, you know, I saw so-and-so, their child is doing this, they're in this area, they're doing this, or you're giving them the answer so that they can move along. Mm -mm. Don't do that. So mile markers, it kind of gives you a little bit of what I just said. It might take longer 
for random thinkers. If your child struggles with the review, do not start level two. Use level one. Mint mixers for level one. Begin with two, add by two till you get to a hundred. Begin with a hundred, subtract twos to zero. These are a lot of, but they should be able to do this. Okay, sometimes it take a little bit, sometimes it might take a long time. So I'm going to open up this student text and kind of show you what's going on in here. Here's the unit one review. Again, I'm not going to read every single thing. I'm just going to pause it or let you pause it. All right. So here's the actual work that they would do. Again, I they work in their notebooks so that we can continue to use this and I can pass it along once I'm finished. This right here, you may want them to do orally. Or, you know, or write it on the board. They might not have to write this down, but again, it helps for the ones that need help with writing numbers. They need to see it. You know, you need to show work for whatever reason. And here's a unit one review. You're using counters in your packing list. It will tell you things that you need. So, let's see. Chalkboard, whiteboard, blank sheets of paper with the corresponding writing. Utensils. This is still lesson three, unit one. So if you're familiar with the original Ray, they have a lot of story problems, and there you go. A lot of these we do as mental math because you want to get them good on the mental math, but you also want them to know how to read the story problems. So these are not intimidating at all. And again, the student text, when you see practice, this is the actual work that they are to do. So you give your child the student book and you remind them that everything that says practice is their actual lesson. So there are 10 questions on this page. Let's see if there are any more. That's it. To skip counting. So I'm going to start skipping around a little bit. You have a tourist attraction. And again, it tells you the supplies. You need counters for this one. You need the hundreds chart in the back of the book. Counting cards or UNO cards or both. Two, level two, unit two, you're moving into multiplication. So I would say you're only on page 16, but you see it told you three weeks. You would think, okay, we can get that done. No problem. Don't rush it. So they're moving into multiplication. They need to know how to skip count. And some kids can get that kind of quickly, but then once they move into the multiplication, they forget it's the same thing. So, how many are two times five? Three times four. These are very, very important. 
the markers they're using the counters okay I'm back up a little bit in the student book but this is unit one even though I'm on unit two I'm going to catch up it's showing you coins they're skip counting coins there's unit two Telling them a little story, and there's their practice. And that's three questions to start with, and of course, in the little story, they're going to answer. You have some questions that you're, you're asking them initially to see if they got the concept through the skip counting. So, practice. Telling you about introducing the multiplication chart that is in the back of the book. Unit 2 is very, very long. Let's see. We're still in Unit 2 on the page 114. And I'm just going to skip to Unit 3. Way, I would say, multiplication, you're getting into the link. This is Lesson 80, 69. So I'm going to flip to 69 in the IG so you can see what it looks like. Okay, here's lesson 69. Tells you what you need. Your supplies. And this is with the assumption that your child has been introduced to the concept of measurement. And have at least seen what an inch, foot, and yard looks like. You're building on a previous lesson. So, very, very important. Do not skip lessons. And what we see in this student text, I want to point out again, there is a lot of reading. If your child cannot read this well, obviously they should not be on this level. It is written so that they can understand it. So, that's the most important thing. They should be able to understand this. If not, you want to back up, hold off, and just keep giving them practice until they can read this and understand it. Here we are, Unit 3, Division. Page 197. So this is like a whole book right here. It's going to take you a while to get here, but that's okay. And so... Lesson 74 is what we're on right here. Here's lesson 74. Lesson 75. Lesson 76. Rest of lesson 76. Very important. You want them to know how to show it, not just memorize it. How many pencils at one cent can Felicia buy with four cent? Okay, this is their lesson. This is four problems. And it's telling you how to draw the division bonds. Again, this is the lesson that the child does on their own. We are in unit three, lesson 118. This is towards the end of unit three in division. Mixed story problems. Let me turn to the IG so you can see what that looks like. That's nine problems there.
And it's telling you if you didn't have uh, counters or a hundred, if you didn't have counters, you use a hundred sharp. What I do in a lot of these, I do change the names. You know, if I'm doing them out loud, orally, I'll change the names and just put their little name in there. And, you know, it just adds all the fun to it. Okay, unit 4, on page 300. This is adding the 100 chart. And it's in 121. Here's lesson 121. So here you see the pa the packing list is a little bit longer. You know the info is a little bit longer. At this point, they have learned how to make bundles, and that's from previous lessons. So you need some sticks just basic craft sticks 13 bundles of 10 sticks 20 individual sticks and two rubber bands they need to be able to see the numbers Alright, so we are on lesson 159. It seems like I'm on 431. I don't know what page I was on, but I flipped a lot of pages. And, um, yeah, the lessons are, like I said, they're not short. They're long, so you want to take your time on the units and things like that. I just flipped here because I had a random sticky note that I never moved out. That's, yeah, that's uber old. <laughs> but... There is that. And what was that? Lesson 159. Okay. So we're still on the same concept. This is 76 in the IG. Unit 5, place value, page 470. So we're working with money. You would lay out 121 pennies. And I'm telling you, this does work because a lot of kids do actually need this. A lot of times we try to shortcut it and tell them, and they just don't get it. They need to see that whole amount of money before them. Next now I'm working with cents versus dollars. This is the last page, 480. Write the value of the digit, and then you get your glossary student book, and there's that. And so, again, this is what the rest of the IG looks like. Right, so when I left you on the summer skills, next page are the cement mixers, and it will tell you when to use these. your charts and games you can copy these you know laminate them whatever you need to do but I suggest you use them number bonds worksheets put them in a plastic sleeve and you can reuse them and so Again, everything that is explained in the lesson, it'll tell you what game board you need for what lesson. And so these things really do help, you know, give them a little game and it'll uh, 
you know, help cement it in and you come back and say, remember when we played the basketball th free throw game, you know, or the soccer field game. And, oh, yeah, I remember that concept. And I'm going to finish the tables here, working with hundreds. So lots of those starts at 100. Math detective and your answer key. So I hope this was helpful. I'm not quite sure how long until I actually edit this. Um, but again, I gave you a very comprehensive look in this book and hopefully you can get a lot out of it. Like I said, just take your time and work your way through here. Don't try to rush it and also refer back. Multiplication, again, this is says level two. You could have an eight year old, a nine year old still needing to use this. Never fear, 10 year old, take your time as long as they are grasping the concepts in a proper manner without struggle and tears don't worry about what the book says on the front the important thing is making sure they get it because they cannot move on until they get it they won't be able to build on the concepts and learn the new concepts until they get it so if you spend a year six months a year and a half two years in the same level it's not that big a deal at all and again, you might have to go back and refer uh, to this level once you're past another level for whatever reason. Leave me your questions, comments, uh, anything that you think I could improve on in the next one. Level three, um, I'm not sure. Like I said, this is kind of uh, different then doing uh you know a lot of the, a lot of the videos the walkthroughs are usually most comprehensive but that's because i get a lot of questions and then after the fact um i get a lot of questions years later so bear with me in this little journey and if there are any other curriculum you're interested in or subjects you're interested in let me know and i am going to continue Hopefully, I can get up level three shortly. I want to give time for this to, you know, kind of marinate and settle before I move on to the next one. But um, it works. And like I said, four different children. This is what we're using for math. And it works. It works wonders. No tears. A lot of questions, no tears, a lot of patience. That's all I can say is a lot of patience and um, <laughs> prayers, <laughs> patience and prayers. We will get there. I know it's not easy. I want to tell you all that I have been what my oldest is 26. So, yeah, I've been at this for a long time. This is the last bunch of children out of nine. This is the last bunch, and I'm I'm there. I'm so over it. <laughs> but it's fun, you know, and it helps me to relearn things that I've forgotten, or it I, it opens my eyes. Some, like I said in the beginning, sometimes there are different ways to solve problems, and a lot of times this will open my eyes to a new way of seeing things that I didn't catch when I was younger and I'm like okay if I had been taught this way I might have you know gotten it a little uh, easier or uh, quicker or retained it a little bit longer you know or I just I catch myself like I said trying to give the child I, I don't give them but I will try to rush it because I just want the results don't try to rush it and get the results. Let them 
marinate on it. I know it has money in here. Uh, teaching about money. A lot of kids, research has been done that a lot of kids don't even grasp money until they get to around eight years old. So that's one of the concepts. I mean, you can kind of give them the recognition and they will push that in school and such. But mentally, developmentally, they don't get it until they're around that age. So you might want to leave that out, just like the fractions and 